cameras and friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see all of you here tonight at this meeting in support of my friend and colleague George Hudson. And I want to say that I haven't come to Fitz Village tonight to savor the ocean breezes. And I certainly haven't come to reminisce on any childhood memories. Although I know many of you know that I grew up in Fitz Village St. James. I came here tonight to speak to you, the people of Barbados. I want you to remember always that this country is your country. The majority of you and the majority of us have invested your all in this country called Barbados. And I'm saying to you tonight that Barbados is on the wrong track and we are going in the wrong direction. This country does not belong to any band of politicians and it does not belong to the titans of business in Barbados. It doesn't belong to any unique and special group of businessmen or businesswomen. This country belongs to all of us and to each and every one of you in the hearing of my voice. And I'm saying tonight that I think that it is time for all of us to stay, take stock of what is happening in our country and to take hold of Barbados once again. And I said all of that by way of introduction tonight because you may have read today's newspaper and you would have noticed that in today's newspaper, I had to comment on the fact that what has been happening in relation to the issue of the cost of living and price gouging in Barbados and the attitude of the government and ministers of this Barbados Labour Party government to the issue. To my mind, has taken the lowest of laws in relation to despicable treating to the electorate just before an election. You know, it is one thing, and Barbadians are used to this, to a political party in office <coughs> coming around just before an election and fixing a road, putting up a street light, perhaps even creating jobs in a statutory corporation which regrettably don't last beyond the election. But we are used to these kinds of things, not only in Barbados, but in the Caribbean. But it must be something that should cause alarm and concern that a political party in office anywhere in the Caribbean, anywhere in the world, would call a meeting, not only of the ministers of government, but with a gentleman who is a senator. He is not an independent senator. As somebody stopped me tonight and said, I had to remind them that he was appointed in the Senate by the Prime Minister of Barbados to replace a lady called Pat Thorrington who ran against me in St. John and who ended her political career and then became the General Manager of the Barbados National Oil Company. She now calls herself a doctor a reverend, a pastor, and a priest. <laughs> All of those things. And I'm happy for her. Andrew Bino was not in that meeting. 
as an independent senator. He is there as a member and a supporter of the Barbados Labour Party. Understand that. So he is not doing you a favor. He is doing the Barbados Labour Party that he wants to see remain in office a favor. And he is going to be repaid for that favor. Do not doubt that. So if this government would have brought all of those people in that room on Saturday for the sole purpose of trying to do an entire country of intelligent citizens and therefore all of the foolishness that you would have heard emanating from that meeting about a temporary reduction in the price of a number of essential items <coughs> is not a new political strategy. The Barbados Labour Party has a Trinidadian political strategist who works for them. After the last election, they couldn't pay him, so you paid him because they gave him a job to undertake an analysis of the government information service and paid him about $200,000 for undertaking that analysis as a consultant. So you paid him for the work he did in the last general election campaign. He's not a Barbadian. And he tried in advising the political party known as COP in Trinidad, exactly the same scenario that you are seeing in Barbados. And they made some pledges, hoping that an election would have been called in Trinidad in either September or October, as it had been originally anticipated. So that if COP had won the elections, there would have effected measures to reduce food prices in Trinidad in time for Christmas. But Patrick Manning got wind of that plan and therefore he stretched the election out for as long as was possible so that they could not score any major political points. And that same idea that failed in Trinidad and saw the total wipeout of COP in Trinidad, this Barbados Labour Party group has decided that they will try on the people of this country. So they brought a few of their supporters and friends, and now they have joined with the Barbados Labour Party in turning their attention on how they can win the next election.